Well, before the woohoos begin, <laughs> uh, let me tell you that Alan McQuirrell spent 14 years in the business world. He was a pastor for 10 more, and for over three decades since, he's been a missionary, first with Global Recordings Network, then as co founder and international director of Galcom International. Now we have to add the title Emeritus. Crossroads' best gift to Alan was Tim Whitehead, who stepped into that role how many years ago? Uh, 2008. 2008. Mm -hmm. And uh, you have another surprise since you left us. I have a fifth child. Wow, congratulations. Thank you. Thank you. So much good news to catch up on. Uh, this book is just, uh, before we ever get to Galcom, Alan, um, real faith journey. Amen. Waves of hope. <laughs> this had to be written. The impact of Galcom Radio worldwide. And I have to say, in, in giving up Tim to you, right. uh, initially knowing he was leaving was pretty tough. Uh, you were in charge of our national camping ministry, Circle Square Ranch, but you went to work with one of your heroes. That's right. How could we not be excited about that? Yeah, I'd, I'd, Alan had been speaking at our church. Our church had supported him as a missionary ever since I was young. I never knew a year without Alan coming by and sharing what he was doing. So it was really, really amazing that God called me to step in uh, into Alan's shoes. And really neat to read about that very Sunday in church mm -hmm. where Alan was saying to the congregation, um, you know, we need to be looking to the future. And you felt the tug right there. Probably more clear than any other time in my life. I literally felt God tap me on the shoulder and say, he's talking to you. So I turned to my wife and said, we need to talk later. <laughs> so. And you're a gadgets guy. Uh, not so much. No. Of course, I worked here in accounting and then with the ranches. So moving to radio, I really knew nothing. Oh. Nothing about We're working radio. on him. Yeah, we're, we're still, working still on him. Uh, well, he can sure talk it well. <laughs> he sure no. can. Alan, I was so, I want to say this ministry more than many others really includes the spouses. It's, it's an all, of, all about the teams. Uh, you and Flory, you and Melody. Um, and we're going to get to the founders in just a second. But the faith steps. You could have owned a Canadian tire. You could still have that classic Oldsmobile. Uh, God put you in the hospital with a strange malady. I don't know if they ever figured out what was wrong. No, they never figured it out. And a pastor came to you and said... Well, I had a problem of hearing. God was saying, Alan, I want you in the ministry. I want you in the ministry. Forget about Canadian tire and all that. And one day I ended up in the hospital. My whole right side was limp. I couldn't work. I didn't move very well. Three days later, the pastor came in. I thought he was going to feel sorry for him. He said, Alan, when are you going to stop playing games with God? God will call you. He wants you in the ministry. And that afternoon, I took Psalm 37, 5, which says, Commit your way unto the Lord. Trust also in Him. Take hold of His hand. Don't let go. And He will bring it to pass. And God has taken hold of my life as I'm willing to go anywhere to do anything at any time. I'm sold out for you, God, from this day on. Started with Toronto Bible and the next, College. next day I woke up. I'm as fine as that. It left me just like that. Went to Toronto Bible College, pastored, and got into gospel recordings and ministry. And it's been great to see how God's worked. Wow. And three, kudos to your wife, who had to say yes to a lot of scary things, like your first house as a family. You, <laughs> you moved five. Well, I told her, Flo, this house isn't much, but it's got a, a beautiful view. You can get a beautiful view. Oh, my goodness. They call, in, locally, they called it the haunted house. Yeah, that's no, no indoor plumbing, no electricity, moldy smell. What else did I read about this place? There was no, no windows in it. Uh, roof, it had running water from the roof to the basement. My favorite story is the, the <laughs> toilet the toilet that was propped up by a pole into the, in the basement so it didn't fall through the floor. Yeah. That's it. <laughs> running, did you get that? Running water from the roof to the basement. <laughs> now, it's, you're going to have to read the book, but here's the house you live in today still. Where is it, Alan? It's up on Stone Church Road in Hamilton. I can't invite you all in for lunch, but you're welcome <laughs> to drop by and see the house. But it's amazing how God guided, because when God directs, he makes no mistakes. And we had five children, and God wanted to give us a place that would be glorious. In four months, that house was transformed. That's why we're involved in transforming lives and people, and just as he did with that house for us. Well, you don't, I think, have to have super sensitive hearing or discernment to see that the early chapters of your life prepared you for, for a faith mission. Uh, ultimately right. Galcom. Did it really start at Tim Hortons? Yeah, we met down on uh, on uh, Main Street. Ken came up and his wife and Flory and I met with them, began to talk about it. We talked to Harold on the phone, Harold Kent was the other partner, and said, let's come together and let's form a ministry. Amazing, God brought a man from Israel, 
a man from Florida and a fellow from Canada, all with the same vision to reach the most unreached people in the world, to not go into debt, to pay as we go. We never ask for money. We trust God to provide the resources. And then also to uh, have uh, raise up 2,000 prayer partners. And we need prayer, folks. We need you to continue to pray for us as we reach more unreached people. And that's what God's called us to do. Amen? Mission statement. I want you to see the, uh, the three couples that began this 25 years ago. Happy anniversary. Providing durable technical equipment for communicating the gospel worldwide. And indeed, what has happened since August 15, 1989 from a dining room table I try. It's uh, quite... Well, you still have that first radio and it still works today. I said, oh, well, in fact, uh, you want to see the first radio I built? Just happen to have one in my pocket here. Oh, oh he's always got Woo! stuff in his pockets. All this right, is now. the very first radio that I went down my basement. It was actually just a, a bit before that, but a year before that. And I made a solar panel, uh, put it on here, wired up the circuitry, fixed it into one station. I went to the ministry they were involved with. I said, that's not our ministry. They're not, we aren't doing that. I said, Lord, you called me to make this. And shortly after that, that's when I got the Ken Crowell, met uh, Harold Kent down in Florida at a tent making conference. And uh, Harold asked, Ken, you're an engineer, technical, can you make a radio for me? And they both just fell off the chair because he had the same vision. Three men with three vi same vision from three parts of the world. Only God could do that. And over one million saying. radios have been placed in over 160 countries. That's Let's good. just you know, say something first. I'm just gonna say from that, from Lebanon, to Greenland, we've been to Indonesia, down to Micronesia, down to all over, all over the Western Hemisphere, from Greenland all the way down Chile, down all the way through. Um, yeah, it's just incredible where God has given us access to with these simple little tools. Now we say fixed station. Like mm -hmm. there, who is broadcasting to these already tuned devices? Yeah, much like when Crosswood started to expand, uh, David Main said, we're not gonna put uh, Huntley Street over in other countries. We're gonna train the local pastors. Alan had the same vision. He was going to train and equip local pastors and missionaries with radio equipment. So we go in, we partner with the evangelicals, we make sure we vet them, make sure they're going to preach the gospel. And then we provide them with the equipment just to expand their reach. Put in a radio station. The first radio station Alan put in was in Haiti in 92, 93. 92, yeah. And then the million radios around so that now that, that pastor and missionary can leave themselves behind. You think about knocking on a door, presenting the gospel, and you leave. Well, then what happens to that family? You leave behind a radio. Then you go to the next village. You leave behind a radio. Now they're still hearing the gospel even though you've left. So you've multiplied yourself over and over and over again. Mm -hmm. And so we partner with over 500 different pastors, missionaries, and missions around the world. 